Boom. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock and Roll Podcast. I am your host, John Harris, and on my right-hand side is my right-hand man, Gabriel. We got to go. And today on the Rock and Roll Podcast, we have Ozenblut, who has a new album called Die Wilde Jagd, which was released on May 29th via AFM Records. Right now, I'm being joined by Ted so to share some information about the album, what Ozenblut has got going on, what they've been up to during this magical time that we've been experiencing in the last couple of months. <laughs> So, Tetsa, so welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. I'm, uh, I really appreciate the interest. And, yeah, I'm glad we can talk a little bit about the new album and uh, the songs and all the things going on. <laughs> Beautiful. Now, one of the tracks that was came up very popular on both Spotify and on YouTube from the album that was released is Kodak, Codex Gigas. Am I saying that right? Yeah, 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 about right. Codex Gigas, yeah, it's it's Latin, so I don't I don't think you can we we can actually butcher it. <laughs> That's a very good point. Now, <laughs> my knowledge, Codex means like a, a scripture or a piece of work or a book or something yes. to that uh, that effect. Gigas, I'm not familiar with. So I guess in a grand question or a basic question, let's just start small. What is this track about? Well. It's it's a little bit of a funny story. Um, I was looking for topics for the new album, and uh, I thought about a couple of things, and I didn't really have any particular theme for the song. This, the songs are usually done way before I start writing the lyrics. So I listen to the songs, and I try to find images that kind of fit that. And uh, for like three nights in a row, I was trying to watch a documentary, and I was always fell asleep <laughs> during that about uh, the so-called devil's Bible. And it's it's not called the devil's Bible because of what's in it, but because of the history behind it. So the Codex Gigas is an actually existing huge medieval book, a uh, huge medieval scripture. And um, it's, it's the biggest, basically, from the 12th century that survived since that time. And it's written by just one monk. And um, basically it's said because all the scripture, everything is so coherent inside of this. And there's no reflection of any illness, of any um, dimming of the eyesight, uh, of any shaking or, or anything, which is usually the case because uh, writing a scripture like this will take approximately 15 to 25 years, usually. So they said, well... He must have done it in one night, and the devil did it for him. <laughs> so, of course. So, uh, the legend is he he did something wrong. I, I'm not sure. I, I did. I don't quite remember. He did something wrong. They um, basically put him in a room. They um, uh, they they uh, sealed him in, built a wall, and the, he said, "Well, I'm I'm going to atone for my sins. I'm going to write down all knowledge of humanity in one night." And he did, and he he came out, and so the 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 monk called Hermanus, he came out, and he was uh, redeemed. But of course, the book was not written by a mortal man in one night, but the devil did it. Natürlich. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's also what you can see in the video. We're performing the song, and you see this monk sitting in this chamber, and he's uh, turning the pages and uh, just just checking his uh, his sand clock and and just turning it and uh, his last basically his his last uh, prayer doesn't go towards God, but he prays for the devil and he he appears and helps him for the tiny price of a mortal soul. Wow. I mean, that's all I can say about that, Tetzel, is wow. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. one of my first exposures to to the track actually was the music video, and I thought, well, this is an incredible, epic music video. You've got the the monk doing his thing. It looks like immurement, um, but now that you've explained that it's not exactly immurement, um, where kind of like uh, an execution thing where they're, they're walling him in and he starves to yeah, death. Yeah, yeah, that's what... And that's what they do, yeah. They wall him in, yeah. And uh, you know, as as I put it, there's this alarmingly buff, incredibly good-looking German guy on a castle, and uh, <laughs> sc screaming at the world while this monk rides away. It's it's an incredible music video, and uh, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. And I was 
showing showing my wife and her her eyes were huge and she's like how did he get that big i was like i don't know i'm gonna ask him we're gonna talk about his workout routine um <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> but um take us a little bit more through this music video because it's fantastic and um if you're listening in and you want to check out the music video you can do so by going to today's show notes at www.therockandrollpodcast.ca and you can see the band rocking out on a castle now i guess did it take some time to find the castle, to find the actor, to really pull the whole thing together? I mean, it seems very elaborate. Yeah, uh, this this video obviously has the highest production quality of the three singles we put out, and we put a lot of money into that. So we worked with the um, director of this video before on the Asenglut video of um, the EP we did in 2018. And uh, so he, he's he's a very very good director. He put together um, together with me. He put the script together, and he found that castle actually. And uh, it's it's also he he bought a, a very old historic building which he's renovating right now, and it's his cellar actually we used for the for the walling in scene. So it was like a perfect match for the ideas we had and for the things he already had basically at hand <laughs> so optimal com- a combination there and uh, the devil and the monk the monk actually is a very very uh like first hour fan of us he's been with us basically since the beginning since since we ever played concerts and um the other guy the devil is a friend of mine and uh i i thought he's quite quite a good fit for what i had uh what I imagined because I didn't want to go to into into too much cliche about it because you know the most terrifying thing the devil could be is like very human and uh, yeah so that was that and um, we wanted to have for, for us the most important thing because we don't have like a huge budget we had we put some decent budget into this but we don't have like twenty thousand dollars to to do one music video you know so the, the the first thing we always have in mind when we shoot a music video, we don't want it to be cringy because like 95% of all metal videos are very fucking cringy. <laughs> <laughs> How do you really feel there, Tetzel? Uh, yeah, yeah. I re- and if I want to tell a story, which is already quite ambitious in my opinion, I want it to be uh, – like like we did, and I'm I'm really really satisfied with uh, with the um, damn my my English today uh, with the end product basically yeah yeah well, I mean it it looks absolutely incredible and um, you know obviously I don't know how much you guys spent on it but I mean if you guys didn't spend twenty thousand dollars and you made it look like you spent more than that then that I think is the the goal at the end of the day <laughs> and we had a couple of cool features we had a camera crane and a drone for some some shots on the castle walls which was pretty pretty insane i think uh so that was that was really nice a couple of nice little features in a german podcast they talked about uh, the video not not in an interview but just they talked about it were like damn what did they use did they have a drone i don't think they would have a crane and we're like yeah but we had a crane (laughs) exactly perfect well now i guess my next question then is is this like a standalone uh track as far as this this subject matter or this topic is concerned or is it something that runs as a theme through the album itself uh thematically it's it's very much on its own yeah the the dvd act translates to the wild hunt which you probably guessed and uh yeah so thematically codex gigas is very very much outside of what we usually talk about or sing about medieval times usually yes but uh in in different contexts uh, uh of course, more about the Viking Age and uh, antique stuff in general, but it's it's very mixed. So um, you could say we don't really, despite uh, our name, Blood of the Aesir, um, is is very very our, our uh, themes, our topics are very very mixed. So uh, we've had songs about um, radio plays, we've had songs about video games. Songs about, as I said, medieval times, Vikings, about uh, very, very current events, and uh, yeah, just music itself. So it's it's quite diverse, a lot more diverse than people would probably think when they first see our like image and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, with the track "De Vildiagd," which, as you mentioned, is the the wild hunt. And I recognize the root word as well from Jägermeister, which is the hunting master. <laughs> yes. 
not just the drink. Um, but I mean, I guess my question is when it comes to the track De Vilde Jagd, is it something that, uh, maybe speaks for the entire album? I guess my question is since the album is called the wild hunt and the track is called the wild hunt, um, which came first, the album or the track? Uh, it came kind of together. Uh, most of the tracks were finished when I wrote the lyrics, as I said, and th- we have less of an overlaying uh, theme in this album. In, in, in Berserker, it was really vindication. So basically uh, pushing through, be, be, being being uh, standing by yourself, kind of kind of showing the world what you're made of. It's a little bit of that. It's continued on the Wilde Jagd, but it's it's not exactly uh, this. This album is a lot more introspective in one way, and on the other side, it's a lot. It's it's just um, how do I say that without sounding kind of cheap? <laughs> I I wanted to tell stories that entertain. I wanted. I I didn't have uh, in mind to to be super deep. You know, I I think the lyrics speak for themselves a very very clear and loud language and uh yeah kind of that's that's kind of the story so uh, the the wild hunt as part of germanic and slavic mythology was very fitting um because it's it's like one of the core topics uh in mythology and um a lot of um I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little bit at a lack of words. <laughs> the, it kind of it kind of connects a lot of threads with all the stories we told. Okay. So yeah, not not really like an overlaying theme, but uh, representing the rest of the album. It's very powerful. It's it's the fastest uh, song on the album, and it's it's really it should set the tone and the mood for really like galloping through the night, <laughs> through the. <laughs> freezing night skies, you know, and then just, just enjoying yourself in a way. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be, essentially was my question was going to be, okay, well, what is the wild hunt? What are we after? Well, the wild hunt itself is a phenomenon, um, of, uh, wild hunters, riders in the night sky. Basically, uh, it's, it's said to be ill omens. If you see the wild hunt in the sky for the, for the coming year, the Wild Hunt is recruiting all the wicked and evil people to to join the ranks. So basically, it's kind of a, it has some similarities to like a purgatory, um, but it's also, as I said, connected to northern mytholo- mythology. So basically, bringing bringing the new year, bringing the weather change during the Raunechte, the, the those are like like the na- last nights of the year. So uh, I don't know any translation for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, Odin, Odin, and and his Odin and the gang. <laughs> Odin and the gang. Uh, yeah, they're, the they're true. Um, riding across the night sky, and the song is divided into basically two points of view. You have uh, a very personal point of view of a pair of um, maybe um, farmers. Basically, but uh, and he is comforting his wife. The farmer is comforting his wife, and in the, in the first verse, he's he's just saying, "Well, all everything's going to be fine. I'm with you. They're going to be gone in a minute." And then in the in the chorus, we change to the to the wild hunt. Well, the wild hunt is uh, flying tonight, and uh, it's bringing ill omens and. Uh, like the like the uh, warriors are in the night sky, and then basically she sees something in him that she's never in that way recognized before. He that he is he has a past. Basically, he is a kind of kind of older imagination of our berserker character we have on the berserker album on the legenden cover and also on the cover of the wild hunt. And uh, but he's like. When he's old and he settled down, and she just doesn't recognize him, she she feels all the scars he has, and she never thought about it. She never like dared to ask where is this from, but now she feels the strength she he still has to protect her. And then we switch the viewpoint, and we we basically describe what happens in the night sky that that Odin is coming with his riders, bringing the new year and taking with him all the wicked people and inviting them to join the wild hunt to uh, bring the frost. 
Wow. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Now, if you dug the track and you want to check out the music video, you can do so by going to today's show notes at www.therockmetalpodcast.ca. And it looks like it's a studio kind of playthrough video. You guys have got Pro Tools up there, got some recording shots. And yes. so basically, I guess that's just kind of it. You guys thought we needed to have a, a studio video, and Deville de Vildiagd was just the, the, the track for it. Yeah, we wanted to do something more personal. Basically, we knew we wouldn't have any kind of budget to realize a video that would uh, present the story of the Wild Hunt. We could have done like another better produced play through video like a, like a, like we did with Zeit an Zeit. We're going to talk about that. But we just wanted to, to connect a little bit more with our fans. I know that some people are a little bit disappointed in the video because they kind of expected maybe more. It's the video itself is in, in what it shows really disconnected from the song. But we just wanted to to present ourselves in a, in a more personal way, present basically studio life. And uh, yeah, just just as I said, enjoy ourselves, enjoy some, the music we, we share with everyone. So it's not like the high end video, um, but it's it's a different experience. And I think if you look at it, uh, watch it in that regard, uh, you're going to recognize that we we just love what we do. It's it's a more personal kind of feel and you really can get a connection because uh it shows how we work in the studio how i'm singing the lyrics we're playing the different instruments and everything so how all, everything comes together to in the end create this uh yeah this album very cool stuff now something you mentioned there also as well as the music video music video for zeit on site um so if you'd like i can also post that and so if you want to go ahead and check out the music video uh, for Zeit and Zeit. Yeah, one more, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you can check it out. Um, and then uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what it means side by side. Is that what it means? Yes, correct, correct. This one is this one is about ourselves, basically, about us, about our fans, about the connection, about all the stories and all the stuff we shared throughout the years. We, we're doing this for quite some time now. It's our 13th year. So... Um, yeah, well, and we, we've written a lot of songs, talked about a lot of topics and had a lot of awesome concerts, awesome experience with uh, fans and a lot of other bands. So this is basically what, what this song is about. It, it asks questions and it also answers them. So it's not like a huge <laughs> riddle or anything. But we talk about uh, who wrote down the legends, who wrote song songs like Monuments, who went into... Uh, into the valley with uh, Tungdil. That's that's a character from the dwarves. It's a German fantasy novel, and uh, we wrote a couple of songs about um, about those. So we are asking the people: Do you remember those songs we shared? Those moments we had about friendship, about music, about everything we endured and went through with uh, all the songs and all the albums and uh, concerts throughout the last decade or a little bit more than the last decade. So and um, in the chorus, we say, uh, we answer it and say, well, the sons of the Aesir and the daughters of the Aesir, which were always by our side, basically referring to our fans, and uh, that we always be, will be strong together, standing side by side uh, um, with um, them. Uh, brave, uh, that we'll be brave side by side, listening to the music. Uh, we say the, the Valkyries sing, but obviously we're talking about heavy metal, <laughs> and that we are basically hard, battle hardened throughout all these storms, and uh, our our minds still free. So yeah, that's that's side uh, side by side, side on side. Uh. Yeah, very, very cool stuff. Now, normally we'd be chatting about all those summer festivals and tours that would be lined up uh, where you guys could conquer and slay people who yeah. are unable to currently not experience live music. So I guess my question then is, is there anything that maybe I didn't bring up that you wanted to chat about as far as lockdown, quarantine, all that stuff is concerned? Well, it's it's very sad because we feel we genuinely feel that we made our best album so far we we progressed a lot in uh in the accessibility of the songs um we have learned kind of 
for us at least, we feel that we have progressed and learned the hard lesson that sometimes making making a little bit more lighthearted music and a little bit more accessible music is sometimes a lot more art than doing something very complicated because I feel that all the songs we we've written right now you can you can just listen to it and you will f you you will f kind of remember it you will feel a connection maybe not in every s song because obviously every musical taste is different but if you if you give it some time maybe one or two playthroughs you will definitely have some tunes in your ear at least that's my opinion and I really hope so for everyone listening to it and uh we also charted in the german album charts which which is kind of special for a pretty smaller metal band a german speaking metal band at that because kind of germans shun german speaking music which is nine. very weird nine yes they do <laughs> germans are are really really weird about german lyrics yeah because they always find stuff to criticize in a in a stupid way <laughs> I've had I've had German reviewers talking about words which were German and they they thought it's it's like uh, a Denglish like a mashup of German and English and I was like dude you're you're just stupid it's a very old German word <laughs> it was in the in the 2000, 2016 album Berserker we had the song Drachenbaum which means dragon well it has nothing to do with born like <laughs> but skyrim was very popular back then so people didn't make the connection <laughs> so <laughs> j just just a little anecdote and uh, so it's it's really really sad because we had a lot of great gigs scheduled we had a lot of big bigger shows and also smaller shows we still hope that we might be able to play our autumn tour our tour in fall with uh, nachtblut another German band and uh, we just heard I think yesterday it was said that like bigger any bigger shows are going to be forbidden till the end of October in Germany um, but smaller concerts might be possible so we'll have to stay in contact with uh, all the clubs and we really really hope that we can play live and don't have to wait till 2021 to reschedule all the shows it's it's also a lot of work and yeah Mm -hmm. I just I just want to present the songs, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I've got so many friends who are you know promoters of, on different levels, whether it's radio promoters or uh, you know show promoters or whatever. And watching them do all the work that is you know required at the beginning of the year to get the summer to run smooth, and then have to spend all of the time that they were normally going to spend otherwise undoing it all was quite. Quite yeah, <laughs> it's 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 nerve wracking. It it really is. Yeah. Now something that you mentioned though, actually, um, that I wanted to touch base on was that you guys had reached a point in your career, which I have, I often call uh, maturity, <laughs> where you, where you kind of realize that maybe we should be concentrating on writing songs that speak to people's heart rather than showing you how fast I can play the guitar. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> it takes it takes a while. <laughs> and I'm just kind of curious if you could maybe dive a little bit into that that process. Did you guys have to rewrite songs a few times? Did you guys work with a different producer? How did you guys get from what we'll call point A, that realization, and point B, where we can listen to the tracks and I can say, very well done? Well, I think when we started Asmlut as a project we had a lot of different influences that we wanted to kind of accommodate in in the music and we kind of everybody wanted to put something in into the songs um i was playing guitar up to 2012 so i also wrote uh, some music and some riffs and some songs and uh, it, it was more of a mashup and you always wanted to if there were good ideas you wanted to incorporate them so it kind of got kind of a little bit more convoluted. I wouldn't say that the songs were were uh, well overwhelmed by all this, but it was definitely something you had to spend more time. You had to invest more energy into getting uh, the fun and the energy out of the songs. And in the end, I think it was uh, worthwhile if you really did, if you really invested that. That's how we get our first listeners and first fans anyway, because they put the energy in to listen to that. But um, 
as you said, and as I said, I put it, it matured over the years. You, you find ways to basically leave a lot of your musical ego at the door and you, you write songs for the purpose of making a good, entertaining and uh, basically very round song. That's at least how I feel and see it. Most of the composing work is done by our guitarist, Klaus. So basically all the ideas we put into uh, the rehearsal room, he, he takes that home with him and then he says, well, this is what I made out of it. And we usually rehearse that for a while, uh, give it a little bit of an edge here or there, and then it's usually pretty refined when it's when it's a finished product. Yeah, very, very cool. All right, well... Tets, unless there's anything else that you wanted to chat about, I just wanted to thank you for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast. Uh, yeah, thank you as well. Uh, yeah, just just listen to the songs. Uh, bear in mind, uh, it doesn't matter if you understand the language. I love listening to soul stuff here. They sing in Icelandic. I don't get a word, but it's awesome. <laughs> so don't care about it being German. And if you want to know what the lyrics mean, you can always ask me. I'm going to translate it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just hit up, uh, hit us up on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, we are usually pretty, pretty close to all the people following us. And one more song I want to point out because it's a personal favorite of mine. It was one of the really late additions to the to the album is 300. Um, it was it was a little bit of a funny story because we had two last songs that were done, and I sat in my in my in my office, and I had to write two more lyrics. And I listened to those songs time and time again. And during the writing process, I had a couple of ideas. I wanted I wanted a song about the end of the world because that was something uh, like a, like a dystopian future. I found really interesting and, and like paint a grim picture of uh, how the world has basically come to an end in this, without any civilization as we know it. And I listened to those songs. And I was like, damn, it it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit the mood at all. So the second one I had up my sleeve was about the plague. <laughs> Same problem here. <laughs> it, uh, the, the last two songs, they were so heroic and the tone was so bombastic. And I was like, damn, it, it doesn't fit. No chance. So I was I was talking to our drummer and I was like, dude, I, I need something. But I cannot just write hero story 583 you know what i mean <laughs> and he was like yeah well write write about like the biggest hero story ever and i was like that's that's a great fucking idea so let's go for 300 and the song and also <laughs> like all the story uh, fit so perfectly uh, into each other and i think it's it's an awesome match um and i, I really love the chorus it's I think if you if you're ever coming to a concert and you don't sing that one along, you're you don't like heavy metal. <laughs> well, if at least you understand a little bit of German. <laughs> <laughs> well, ich kann Deutsch aber nicht so gut. Basically, <laughs> it says uh, basically 300 warriors uh, never give up uh, for their freedom. They will endure it. 300 fathers far from home with their shields or on them. So basically that's, that's, uh, what, um, ah, damn, uh, Leonidas wife told him when, when he went to fight Xerxes army at the Thermopyles, she said, come back with your shield or on it. So, yeah. And I thought that was really like an awesome and epic picture. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I need to watch that movie again. So many good one-liners in that movie. It's it's awesome. It's and it's actually <laughs> the funny thing is uh, we we talked about it beforehand. I studied to become a teacher. I studied to become a history and English teacher. I, I'm sorry to all the listeners right now that I'm amming so much. It's it's late at night. <laughs> it's my excuse. I haven't talked so much in English about my music in a long time. Well, so um, the the mu movie despite being of course a hollywood production and being very fantas fantasized or fantasy style it it's just, it's a really kind of accurate uh portrayal of how history is written down so all the details basically fit 
I mean, like not the details of how people looked and stuff, but like like details details of the story are very very faithful to the the historical records we have. <laughs> And also, also those quotes, a lot of those quotes are basically things that were put down in, in ancient times. Uh, tr yeah, truth be told, like a couple of hundred years after the battle. So <laughs> it's a little bit of fiction in that already, but it's as true as we can get to the accounts that we have. That's all you can ask for in history, I think. I think so. Yeah. And yeah, like things they, they said, they, they, they drank, um, uh, they were were um, drying out rivers. Uh, we will fight in the shades, uh, and all this stuff was basically is, is in historic accounts. So all of these great one-liners. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite one-liner out of the whole movie is "It's an honor to have died by your side," and he turns to him and he says, "And it was an honor to have lived by yours." Oh yeah, that's that's goosebump stuff right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> I love it. And then they came out with a sequel that was terrible. Spartan. Oh, no. Let's not talk about that. Yeah, we won't. Spartan. Never had Spartan happened. heritage goes down to Hercules himself. Mm -hmm. Leonidas <laughs> honors this legacy. <laughs> His battle cry is loud and long. I don't, I don't know. I've never watched it in English, so <laughs> it's just I'm translating it back from German. So oh, sorry, okay. It's not accurate. <laughs> yeah, perfect. All right. Well... Tetzel, thank you again for some. Boa, thank you again so much for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast. Thank you for having me, John. Gabriel, also thank you for being here with us. He says thank you for being here. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>